Buenos dias, third graders. It's a great day to make it a great day. We've got a great reading lesson ahead for you today. We're going to be doing the same skills as yesterday, so we'll be looking at comparing and contrasting informational text. But we're going to add a few new things in that uh, we hope will kind of build your skills as a reader and make you stronger and stronger. So we hope you enjoy this lesson. So like we talked about yesterday, when we compare things, we're telling how they're the same or their similarities. When we contrast things, we're telling how they're different or what their differences are. Today we thought we'd warm up our brains with comparing and contrasting by looking at two mammals. They are special ones and they actually belong to Miss Colia and Miss Martinez. Take a look. Over on the left you can see Miss Martinez's pet cat Pantera and on the right you see Miss Colia's pet cat Mickey. The question for you is, how are they the same, and how are they different? Take a moment to compare and contrast these two cats. You might have said that they're the same because they both have soft fur and pointy ears. You might have said that they're different because Pantera is dark black and Mickey is a lighter shade of color. Or that Mickey has stripes on his fur, and Pantera does not. Well, that was a fun way to start, but we're not done. Did you know Miss Martinez and Miss Colia both have a second cat? Let's compare and contrast. This time, let's take a look at Miss Martinez's cat, Puma, and Miss Colia's cat, Iris. How are they the same, and how are they different? You probably noticed a few similarities with these cats as well. Like the first two cats, these ones also have pointy ears. They also have soft fur. And maybe you also noticed that they have big paws and whiskers. How about differences? Well, the first one I noticed was Puma has these bright orange eyes, whereas Iris has more of greenish yellow eyes. Puma is just one color, black, whereas Iris has some streaks in its fur. Hey, we're off to a great start. We've already compared and contrasted mammals. Big shout out to Miss Colia and Miss Martinez for letting us look at their cats today. Now let's take a look at our teaching point and get into some text for a little more comparing and contrasting. Teaching point. Today I want to teach you that researchers compare and contrast the information they learn about topics. Today let's look at two types of animals for our topics as we compare and contrast. Let's first look at mammals and then let's look at birds and let's compare the way that birds and mammals are the same and different. Once again we're going to check in with our friends Annie and Moby to give us a little more information. What are mammals? Mammals are vertebrates that get milk from their mothers when they are very young. They breathe air with lungs and have hair or fur. Right, Moby? People are mammals. Some mammals live in water, like whales, but they still have lungs to breathe oxygen, so they need to come up for air. They even have hair. The smallest mammal in the world is the bumblebee bat. It's about the size of a thumb. Bats are the only mammals that fly like birds. But birds are vertebrates, and they're the only animals that have feathers. Birds have a beak, two wings, and two legs. They also lay eggs, and most care for their young. No, Moby, not all birds fly. Penguins are flightless birds. They dive and swim to hunt for fish. As I type in some similarities and differences on the next slide, I want you to check what you came up with and see if any of your answers match what I put in. I also want you to see if you came up with any other ones that we don't put in to the notes. 
A first similarity for mammals and birds is that they both fit under the bigger category of vertebrates, meaning they have backbones. So I'm going to type that in our notes under similarities. They both are vertebrates. And I'm going to write in parentheses that they have backbones. The second similarity from the text in the video is that they both breathe with lungs. Remember, even the whales that live in water have to come up for air as mammals and all the different types of birds breathe using lungs. A third similarity was a little harder for me to find, but I thought about it and came up with an in-my-head response. I noticed that mammals live in a lot of different places. Some are in cold habitats, some are on land, and some are in water. And birds have a similar thing where they also live in multiple habitats. Some are in the cold, some are in the hot, and some come in and out of water as well. So I could write they both live in many different places, and in parentheses I'll write in habitats to use my expert word. Now that we've taken notes about how mammals and birds are similar, let's look at how they're different. A first thought that comes to mind is what goes on the outside of their bodies. Mammals are covered in fur, whereas birds are covered in feathers. As I looked for a second difference, the first one I thought of was that birds could fly and mammals could not. But then I remembered in the text that Annie had said that there is one type of mammal that can fly. Bats. Bats actually are not birds, they're mammals. And so I can't use that as a difference. Hmm. So then I thought about something else. Birds are all born from eggs whereas mammals are all born alive when they're babies. Thanks for your hard work today. You're building skills as a reader each and every time you watch one of these videos and think along with it. I've got a few other kind of special things to share as we move into the end of the video, make sure you watch all the way to the end to practice the vocabulary words for the week. Have a great day, third graders, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Some of you earlier this year were reading these Who Would Win books in our classroom. For example, The Jaguar versus The Skunk. This is an awesome series in which the authors compare and contrast the two animals, trying to figure out which one would win if they were to have a battle. If you get a chance, Check these books out. It's a great way to, again, use those skills of compare and contrast. We also wanted to show you something really special that's about to happen. Miss Martinez is going to be getting another new cat. This one's name is Coco. It's little, it's sweet, and it is adorable. Next time you talk to Miss Martinez, check in about the new pet, Coco the cat. Our final activity for today is to look at those expert vocabulary words for the week. Remember, these are the words we want to use when we describe those animals. So this week we're talking about classification. Remember, that's where you sort different items into different categories based on what they're like. When we look at classification of animals, we split them into two groups, vertebrates, the animals with backbones, and invertebrates, the ones without backbones. We're focusing on these five groups of vertebrates, mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. Take a look. The first category of animal we'll look at is fish. Fish breathe with gills as they live in the water. Most have scales and fins. Most lay eggs and they have a body temperature that changes with its environment. So if they're in cold water, their temperature goes down. If they're in hot water, their temperature goes up. Here's a look at a few different varieties of fish. Please note that sharks 
are in fact a type of fish. The next type of animal we'll look at are amphibians. Amphibians are unique because they spent the first part of their life breathing with gills underwater. You can think of the frogs beginning of their life cycle as tadpoles. But as adults, they breathe with lungs and mostly live on land. They have smooth, moist skin. Most lay eggs, and like fish, they have a body temperature that changes with its environment. Here are a few examples of amphibians. Frogs and toads, salamanders, and newts. Another category of animals are reptiles. Reptiles breathe with lungs. They have scales or plates on the outside of their body. Most lay eggs, and they have a temperature, that, a body temperature that changes with its environment, like fish and amphibians. Here are some examples of reptiles. And for you dinosaur fans, reptiles are the closest living rep, uh, relative to dinosaurs. Another category that we talked about today is birds. As we talked about earlier, birds breathe with lungs and lay eggs. They have feathers, a beak, two wings, and two feet, and they have a constant body temperature. So whether they're in the cold or in the heat, their body temperature will stay the same. Remember that birds come in very different varieties. Some hunt for other animals, while others uh, look for seeds to eat. Some swim, some fly, some don't. Our last category is mammals, which is what people are. Mammals breathe with lungs, have fur or hair, can nurse their young with milk, they usually give birth to live offspring or live babies, and they have a constant body temperature, which means if they go in the cold, it stays the same. If they go in the hot, it stays the same. Those are our five categories of animals. Keep using those expert vocabulary words throughout the week.